Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Time Out with Tackle What's Next. I'm your host, Danielle Berman. I am the founder of Tackle What's Next, and I'm really excited to join you guys live every Wednesday for our newest content series to chat with athletes and execs on how they've used lessons outside of the game. Um, Sports have taught them, excuse me, uh, to benefit their lives outside of the game. Before we dive into our awesome guest today, I want to give a quick PSA. We have a virtual summit next week on July 15th. Um, log- registration is free. You can find the info in the link in our bio. Check out the awesome speakers we have lined up. I encourage you to take some time to review and sign up if it would be of interest to you. Um, We're going to be talking about embracing what's next. And I know obviously none of us know what's next. So it should be a really cool conversation about controlling what we can control. So anyways, today um, we are going to be taking a time out with Courtney Place. Courtney is the founder of See Us Movement, which raises awareness about female athletes and the way they are underrepresented, sexualized, and judged on appearance rather than their ability. And Courtney has also joined the Her Next Play team to support female athletes through their programming. Courtney played volleyball at Augustana University, where she was an All-American and team captain. So I'm going to bring her up on screen. I'm really excited to have her here let's see if she's here Courtney is this you let's see hello hi Courtney how are you I'm good how are you good thanks for joining us today it's so exciting to chat and catch up with you yeah of course I'm super excited How have you been? How's everything been going since I think the last time we connected was like late May. So that was like right in the middle of quarantine. How's everything for you now? Yeah, um, things are good. Things are really busy. Um, I work full time at St. Paul Urban Tennis. And so we just got program um, summer programming going. So that's been crazy. In the past three days, we've had rain cancellations. So it's been a struggle. And then her next play, we're doing virtual 5k. So that's been crazy as well. And then um, with CS, I've been partnering with a lot of black sports initiatives lately. Um, So just been crazy busy since the last time we talked. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've been seeing a lot of the content you've been putting out and it's awesome to see how active see us and her next play have been during this time. So did you have to pivot at all or like change gears when this all started with COVID and everything going on? Like how did you adjust from see us and maybe from the her next play team, how you guys changed and pivoted? Yeah, I definitely think that as a marketing person, um, this time has been really a chance to be able to use our creativity um, because there's not summer program going on. There's not any workshops, nothing's happening. So it's really all about creating content um, and engaging users through social media. So in that way, I definitely switched gears. Um, But then also, you know, with everything that has been going on with Black Lives Matter, Um, and George Floyd dying about 10 minutes from my house, I definitely had to switch gears, you know, um, educating myself more, wanting CS to be a more progressive platform, a more diverse platform, um, wanting both me and CS to be better. So in that way, um, the past month, I've definitely switched gears for that as well. Yeah, I think that's definitely, I've noticed that obviously a lot of people came out and started to say they wanted to do better. But one of the, the you know, accounts and one of the people I've been following is your lead on some of this stuff because you've done a really good job, you know, it's sharing resources, but also, like you said, kind of making sure we're highlighting the right voices and highlighting mm-hmm. the right action steps that people can take to actually make a difference and not just, you know, post on social media. Yeah. Um, so been really cool for for those that don't know what cs is would you mind just walking them through you know what the organization is and then we'll we'll talk about you a little bit too yeah of course um so i started cs my junior year of college in 2018 um i was studying inequalities in sports because i was a media major so i was studying um women in sports in the media And I was really upset with how women were represented in the media. So I wanted to create kind of an online campaign to create change. 
Um, and that's kind of how it started was just a student <laughs> project type um, situation. And then from then it grew from other female athletes posting their experiences with the hashtag CS and it kind of blew up um, for a couple years. And then uh, last summer, I won a grant from Victoria's Secret Pink that allowed me to continue um, growing CS and it became a program underneath her next play. Um, and now I do workshops with middle school and high school girls to kind of teach them how to be strong and confident in themselves. Yeah, which is so cool. I think there's so much need for programs like this because as we'll get into, I'm sure, um, sports, so many young girls play sports and, and it's important to understand those skills and how they can translate out of sports into all these cool things that you're doing. So mm -hmm. I want to take you back to when you were probably a young kid running around. What was your first experience with sports and how did you choose volleyball? Like we talked about how you're an All-American volleyball player at Augustana University. Like how did, how did you get into sports? How did you get into volleyball? Yeah, so I actually have two older sisters that I grew up with, and they both played basketball and volleyball. And my dad was actually, um, when they played, he was the assistant basketball coach. But when I played, he was the head basketball coach. So I just grew up around sports. I was in a gym all the time. <laughs> I went to all their games, all their tournaments, everything like that. Um, and it never crossed my mind to not play sports. It just kind of came naturally because of that. Mm -hmm. And my earliest kind of memory is I had an orange and white ball that was signed by my sister's team, which I thought was like the best team in the world, but it was just a high school, small town team. Um, and I would carry it around to every game and tournament. And during timeouts, my dad would toss me the ball and I'd pass it or set it back to him. So <laughs> I was just, I always loved sports. I was always interested in sports and I knew that I wanted to play in college from a very young age. Um, and I was lucky enough to have parents that, you know, um, gave me that opportunity through driving me an hour and a half to club practices and paying um, for me to be able to do that. So yeah, sports, it was just automatic for me. <laughs> Yeah. And how did you get into volleyball specifically? How did you choose? Because it sounds like basketball was the sport mm -hmm. that the family was involved in. So how did volleyball become what you decided to focus on? Um, I would say that my sisters did like volleyball a little bit more, even though our dad um, loved basketball. But I actually liked them equally um, in high school and middle school. I didn't know which one I wanted to play in college. I was getting offers for both. Um, but it kind of, <laughs> it sounds bad, but I just don't like running. I really don't. <laughs> I, I don't enjoy it. I don't notice when I'm playing basketball that I run so much, but like training to be able to do that is not my favorite thing. So I much rather jump in volleyball than run. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how that got decided. And also there's just something about, you know, I, I was a outside hitter and when you get a kill, there's just something about that feeling that I haven't, I didn't feel in basketball and I haven't felt anywhere else. Um, so I just, I think that was something hard to give up as well, thinking about giving that feeling up at that time. It was hard to give up after I graduated too, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to talk about the impact that playing sports made on you. Like how, what impact did it make on maybe like who you are today, how you present yourself? Are there things that literally sports defined about you and, and that you still use today? I think that um, sports made me be able to build relationships really well. Um, I was a captain at college for two years and in high school, I honestly, maybe three years, I don't know. I don't know, maybe two years. Um, and just my ability to build relationships with people, even, even if, um, your teams, you don't really choose in sports, you know, you don't choose who gets to be on your team. So you hang, you end up hanging out with people you probably wouldn't have hung out with if they weren't on your team. And to be able to build those relationships, because it is important to make sure everybody is feeling included. Um, I think that's a big thing that I've gotten out of sports. And then also another big skill right now, especially with everything that's going on, um, is my time management skills. 
that like in college being able to be a student athlete you know homework practice weightlifting games traveling all that kind of stuff that really taught me how to be able to do what I'm doing right now with CS and my two other jobs on top of that um yeah for for sure helped me um <laughs> yeah <laughs> no great it's a great answer I think a lot of times we talk to athletes where they say, oh, well, I didn't have time necessarily to do an internship while I was playing. But, you know, I was also playing, you know, what, 40 games and then practice and then doing my, you know, coaching meetings. And then I was mm -hmm. doing tutoring and then I was in school. And so it's like, well, that's a pretty good example of time management to any employer that would ever be looking to see how your skills are. So just talk about how well it went in school with sports. And that's a pretty good example. So, yeah, that's yeah. a great example. Um, I think that a lot of athletes may overlook when they're thinking about like, oh, well, what could I offer to this organization? But what would you say um, you started your own, you know, company um, or your own organization with CS, the movement? Um, what would you say um, helped set you up for success? You talked about building relationships. You talked about mm -hmm. time management. But is there anything you have done or maybe you didn't do that you wish you would have done when you left sports um, that's maybe helped you get where you are today? Um, I think that I wish I would have started earlier networking because I know a lot of students don't know where they want to live after, but I feel like most do. Um, and I knew I wanted, I wanted to move to the Twin Cities because I've always wanted to live here. And so I wish that even like sophomore or junior year, I would have started networking then. Um, because I thought I kind of felt late to the game a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. compared to some other people, especially students that went to the U of M or went to schools in the Twin Cities. Um, they're already here. They're already networking and it's competitive. So I really wish that I would have started sooner. I feel like that's the biggest one yeah. <laughs> um, that I wish I would have known. I think also I wish I would have known that, you know, it's you're not going to find a job right away, most likely, and that's okay. Um, I think that because I was so successful in sports, I felt this pressure um, that people were like still watching me, which they probably weren't, <laughs> but that people were still watching me and like wanting to know what I was going to do next and if I was going to be successful in what I did. And I just felt this pressure and um, I did have a part-time job for a while with her next play. Um, so that was good, but I just kind of felt like I was failing people. I don't know. That's kind of just a feeling that I got in. I wish I could go back and tell myself like, no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's normal not to like get an amazing job right out of college. Um, but For, yeah. Well, not just athletes, right? Like it's mm -hmm. fun. I was tough. And I think, um, you hit a great point. There's so much pressure on athletes to be like the best. And so sometimes that translates right into other areas of life. And it's like, well, if you're getting a job in a new field, like no one's expecting you to be the best. No one's expecting yeah. to come in and just be like, all right, I got it, mastered it day one. So I feel like that's a great example of like really taking that pressure off yourself and being like, look, I'm trying something new. I'm exploring my options. I'm going to see what I like, what I don't like. And one thing I always like to say is like, you can change a job you don't like. You don't have to stay there. Like you can leave. It's, it's yeah. easy. It's not an easy conversation, but it's really not hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think those are great answers. Um, for see us and for Her Next Play, what are you guys doing? You talked about what you're doing kind of around the Black Lives Matter movement and kind of continuing to um, raise awareness about Black voices and highlighting the, the injustices, specifically in sports, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. what's coming up for you guys? What's, what's next? What's next? <laughs> um, well, her next player, <laughs> we're really focusing on the virtual 5K. And I actually, I missed the first day of training because it was pouring rain. So that was really sad. But so today was my first day of training. And I honestly, like in basketball, I probably didn't. I didn't know it, like I said. But I have never on purpose ran more than a mile, like in my life. <laughs> um, so I struggled. It was, I think I did 2.8 miles this morning. And I feel great now. But, ooh, I was, my perseverance <laughs> skill was really <laughs> put to the test this morning. Um, so that's mostly what we're focusing on for her next play. We're working on um, a middle school pilot with a couple more organization in the twin organizations in the twin cities um to kind of help keep girls in sports 
Um, so that's with her next play. With CS, um, I really am still focusing on partnering with Black Sports Initiatives. Um, luckily, I keep getting, because of what I've been doing, I keep getting contacted by more and more of them. And so every oh, week, yeah. I've kind of been able to partner with a new um, organization. And so I'm really excited about that. And then I also created a diversity and inclusion group. And they're awesome. Um, and so I'm pumped about that. We had our first meeting last Sunday. And yeah, it's just, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I've learned with CS that um, there's people that really care about it. And there's organizations that contact you out of the blue, like you probably know this. And so sometimes it's easier for me not to plan way ahead. <laughs> because I am like, just thrown DMs. And I'm like, I've kind of realized that that's kind of the best way to do it. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that. Sometimes you plan it out so much and then something comes up and you're like, oh, now we got to change the plan up. So um, yeah. I totally understand that. And I'm glad to hear people are reaching out and wanting to engage because I think what you guys are doing is awesome. And just to, to wrap up this conversation, I just wanted to have you kind of shout out how can people follow, engage with you, engage with see us, engage with her next play and, and connect to learn more. Yeah, you can follow her next play on basically everything. <laughs> I don't even want to try to name all the social medias that her next play has, um, but at her next play, and you can find more information about them at her next play.org. And then CS, same thing at CS movement and CS movement.com. And then my personal Instagram is at court place. Awesome. Well, Courtney, this was so much fun just to chat and catch up. I'm glad things are staying busy and you have so much coming up. Um, definitely appreciate your support. And to everyone that tuned in, I hope this was a really great um, conversation. You got a lot out of this. Make sure you follow Courtney. Make sure you follow CS and her next play. Um, and we will see you next week for another live interview. So Courtney, thanks again for being here. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye.